Yeah, hello everybody. I wish you a dry <laughs> welcome uh, here in this uh, dry tent. And uh, let me introduce to my right side, there's the system architecture of the RIPE NCC, Emil, and also he's a data addicted, and he makes some cool uh, experiments uh, with internet rules. So give him a warm applause and uh, yeah, enjoy the talk. Hello. Thank you. Hello, nice crowd. Hello, remote crowd. Uh, I'm Emil, uh, and what I would like to talk about is uh, something called Hackerspaces Jedi. Everything is interconnected, but how? And this is actually a play in three parts. So we begin with episode four. Um, so in the beginning, there was the internet, right? So you can all play the song that is under this. I wasn't sure if the audio would play, so I, 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 I didn't there. But like a while ago, the internet was, uh, was developed, and it's all nice, and we all know it, and we all love it. Um, uh, but we all like it to be better. Uh, so how do you make something better? You try to measure it. Um, uh, that's a rhetorical question, of course. Do we want to have a better internet? And there's a nice Dutch saying, which is, meten is weten, to measure is to know. So that's, um, so how, how, how do you make a thing like that uh, better? And we have lots of tools to measure the internet. And um, how many of you are familiar with Traceroute? Okay, so I, I don't have to really explain what Traceroute is. Uh, so you run it from your local box to the rest of the internet. Uh, simple. So. Say your box is in Rome, which is this, this, I mean, there's lines here, it's supposed to be a map of Europe. Um, uh, so you have a box in Rome, and all roads lead to Rome, right? Um, but what if you want to measure from the Netherlands to Paris? That's, that's, you cannot measure that from your local box. So if you want to do trace routes uh, as a measurement thing, uh, but want to measure all of the internet, your, your one box and trace route won't, uh, just won't do it. So what do you do? Uh, oh, yeah, the other thing is that um, internet paths are weird. This is not um, like your regular uh, car system. It's it, uh, uh, the, the traffic system that uh, with a car you typically take the shortest path, but uh, in the internet these could be wildly inaccurate. For instance, a friend of mine is trying to establish uh, uh, an internet exchange point in Albania, um, and he actually measured from two points in Albania. He measured this weird path. So that's, that's uh, uh, yeah, way, 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 way longer than, uh, than a normal path. Uh, he used that with the system that I'm going to talk about. Uh, he measured that with it. Um, but path from A to B, so the path from me to you, uh, could be different from the path from you to me, right? It's, there's asymmetry there, and actually uh, somebody tried to measure it, and he came at only 12% is symmetric. So doing it from this one point out doesn't guarantee that all the roads back are, are the same. So there's, there's a lot of weirdness, so how do you deal with that? Well, the cloud is a, is a, is a thing nowadays, so you just use lots of other people's uh, computers. And in our case, these computers are uh, something we call RIPE Atlas. So that's uh, um, a system, so, some sm very small boxes. Uh, so there's one hidden on the stage, actually. <laughs> Can you see it? It's, it's, it's right here. So um, it's these, these types of boxes that we put, that we give out to people uh, to help us and other people collect data on the internet to make it better, to, to measure it. Um, so, uh, all these dots are where these devices are. So if you look all the way up here, Schwalbart, um, there's actually a probe there, and it, um, we call these devices RIPE Atlas probes, and this is what it looks like. So, physical devices worldwide, we have almost 10,000 deployed now, um, um, and it helps people measure the internet. So um, I'm not a, a hardware guy, so uh, I, I'm just going to read this out for the people who are. And uh, Philip there, can you wave Philip? He's the hardware guy who knows all about this type of stuff, so ask him all the, the, the hardware questions. 
version one and version two, which is these nice small devices which we don't give out anymore, our Lantronix Export Pro. Uh, version three is the nice, uh, this nice box that I uh, just have here, uh, which is based on a TP-Link. Uh, it does not work as a wireless router. That functionality was disabled. Um, and there's, some, uh, there's a one U box that we put in, in, in like a stable places, data centers. Um, and, and that's uh, based on Sucris, or was based on Sucris. Um, and we might in, in the future have virtual uh, devices as well. Um, so, but the, the main point here is I, I think they are everywhere. These are measurements for a community by a community. How it works is we give these devices out to you, you plug it in wherever you uh, uh, think is, an, is a nice place uh, to measure from. Uh, and by that, you become part of this, loc of, of this global uh, system, uh, and you can do measurements on all the other devices. Um, um, so the, this community is everybody interested in the internet routing performance, so could be you. Uh, there's a URL there if you want to become a host. Um, uh, my colleague Vesna, who's also here, um, Gave a, gave a talk uh, yesterday and was so successful in giving out probes, we have one left, so this is the only one left. Um, <laughs> uh, other, otherwise, uh, you, you'll just have to go there and uh, um, follow the instructions there on how to, uh, how to apply to get these devices and become part of this, uh, uh, of this thing. Um, so that was episode, or that was the first part. Um, second part is uh, something we developed uh, on top of the data that comes out of this. So now you have all of these devices that you can do uh, measurements from uh, everywhere. Um, so can you uh, measure what the internet in a country looks like based on, 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 uh, on the data? So um, what a college project, IXP Country, Jedi, uh, and it's measuring the path between these, pro these devices in a country. So here, there's two devices in, uh, or three devices, uh, a group of devices in a country, and you just do a mesh of these trace routes in between. So the trace routes will have the path that is taken, and if you do a mesh, it also has the back path, uh, and it will have all the in intermediate hops. Uh, so you can determine um, all kinds of interesting things about um, uh, about that path. For instance, uh, two points in the Netherlands. Can we find points in the Netherlands where the, traf where the path goes out of the country and comes back again? Because that's, well, suboptimal, you would say. Um, uh, so what does it actually look like? Are, are there any, any interesting things we can see into the, in, in this? And can we improve the internet by doing this? And of course, it's, it's, it's fun to uh, measure the internet, like, uh, like, like I'm doing right there. Um, and this is a, this is a prototype. Um, there's a, this, this is a short URL where you can find all the information. Um, uh, there's a GitHub re repo, and there's uh, the latest data that we have on each of the countries uh, that we do this for. Um, so why the name? IXP, Internet Exchange Point. Is everybody familiar with Internet Exchange? Who, doesn't, uh, who does know what an Internet Exchange Point is? OK. So, Sorry? Where I get my new modem, right? <laughs> Almost, yes. So basically, switch uh, or something um, um, far complex than a switch, but virtually a switch where, you, uh, where networks uh, inter interconnect and have a lot, lot of internet connect, uh, connection density. So the, 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 uh, well, the thing that belongs with uh, Exchange Point is they keep local traffic local. And so this is a means to actually measure that. Uh, countries is an instance of local, but you can do this for anything. Uh, so you can do this for all the countries in the Middle East, or you can do it for a city. Or is stuff kept local in a city, or in a region, or in a, uh, uh, in a language, uh, on a language boundary. And uh, Jedi. Uh, Actually, it's because my son loves Star Wars, but you can also say that um, adding metadata to this, which is uh, another part of the, of the project, uh, makes uh, it do some magic. And uh, I'll, I'll show the magic. Um, so 
digging into this, uh, for each IP we see in, in the trace route, we capture geolocation data, and that's tougher than you think maybe, and network information. Do we find these IXPs in the path? Do, uh, what autonomous systems are there? Um, and as that, that uh, if you look hackers metadata, metadata is a hacker's best friend. So problem with infrastructure geolocation is that it's hard. Um, just, just an example, and I don't know if you can see the IP address here. Uh, uh, it's a uh, level three. It's a very big transit uh, network. Um, if you look that up in any geolocation database, you end up here in the middle of in, in the centroid of the U.S. Um, and there's uh, some nice articles uh, how an internet mapping glitch turned a Kansas farm into a digital hell. There's actually a farm there that receives uh, police visits, uh, angry boyfriends, uh, w w whatever, um, because that's the centroid of the US. Um, whereas if you look at the host name that belongs to that, it pretty clearly says this is Amsterdam. And this network is pretty tidy in, in naming their names. So where people um, uh, think these databases for this are uh, pretty accurate, which they are for the, uh, the edge of the internet, where the users are, for, for where there's the infrastructure, um, these can be wildly, wildly inaccurate. So that's, that's actually uh, quite a problem for, for doing this type of uh, thing. So um, what we thought of is uh, crowdsource this information. So we, now we have an interface uh, where uh, uh, experienced users can actually, they see these names and, and they see them in the context of this trace route and they can see, ah, that's in Amsterdam, that's, oh, that's the name of my data center here. So they can actually feed us this information and um, uh, uh, researchers have done research on it and have actually shown that the data that we have in here is far accurate than the traditional geolog uh, solutions. So, solution is called OpenIP Map. We're currently making a, uh, uh, a production version of this because this is uh, this is uh, quite prototype at the moment. Um, so, uh, if you're interested in this type of stuff, uh, watch that name, watch our announcements. Um, uh, and of course, it's made a source be with you. It's on GitHub, uh, it's in Python, and we run this monthly for each country uh, where we have enough devices in the country. So uh, uh, this is a URL where you can go to. You can also go to that simple URL I, I showed earlier, like, uh, like below there. Um, so, how, so digging into the details, you find the networks and IXPs in the country, you select one or two probes per network. We have networks like Deutsche Telekom, which we have three or 400 probes in, so you don't want all of these probes measuring to all the other probes. You just select one or two to get a representative uh, 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 sampling. And then you do the mesh between these, so uh, all the probes measure towards one, and then next, all to one, so un until you have a, uh, a, a total mesh. Uh, and then you combine that with the metadata, so that's where the magic happens, and the output is like a geographical view, what does the country look like, um, a matrix view, and a graph. And if you have other ideas, this is o uh, open uh, code, so be happy to, for people to actually uh, contribute to this. Um, so this is um, a snapshot, uh, one of the monthly snapshots for the Netherlands, a couple of months back. Um, and what you can actually see pretty clearly is uh, London and Frankfurt. So th that's where big exchange points are. Um, so paths are not completely staying in the country. Some people are surprised by that because we, there's very large exchange points in the Netherlands already. Um, but actually, it's, it's, uh, I'm being a politician here. I'm not telling the full truth because... Um, um, and it's probably the screen resolution because if you zoom out of this, this is actually what that looked like. And you just didn't see this. There was actually a path that we measured that went all the way to the US uh, East Coast. Um, and um, I found it so weird, I contacted these networks and they said, hey, yeah, that's not what we are supposed to be doing, but this is just BGP and there's not a lot of traffic between us, so uh, we never, uh, we never noticed. Um, so that hairpin was uh, fixed. And this is uh, something that um, people can use this to make the internet better like this. I have a, 
I have a colleague uh, in the Middle East, for instance, who does this for all of the Middle East and shows it to people that their path between their countries go through Europe, through their big internet exchanges. And that's now being fixed due to doing these types of measurements with these devices. Um, so we have a difference between IPv4 and IPv6. Um, um, well, that, that, that's a graph from uh, a big exchange point. This is the V4 traffic, V6 traffic. But what you can see here is there's a bit of uh, a geek bias in, into our uh, deployment, because there's actually quite a lot of uh, IPv6 uh, where we have uh, this, this, this data collected. Um, uh, and you can, of course, see small differences between the two. Um, so this is a matrix view. So uh, if you color, um, oh, these are the sources uh, of the measurements, and the columns are the, the destinations of the measurements. And then you have each of the cells. You can color them by whatever you want. And in this one, I, I, I chose to color them by, uh, does it go through an IXP? Is the IXP keeping local traffic local? Uh, that's so. Uh, and the other coloring is based on, does the path stay in the country or go out of the country? So the green is IXP uh, path stays in country. So that's IXP keeps local traffic local, and that's pretty much the case in the Netherlands. Um, uh, uh, yellow is, uh, it's local, but it's not via an IXP, so it's a direct interconnect or via some local networks. Um, the red uh, is where the path go out of, out of the country. So, um, if you go to the URL, it's actually interactive. So you can hover over, you see the actual trace route, so you can see if the geolog is correct. Um, you see ASs, and um, you can actually see what, what uh, uh, the metadata is, what that's included. So if stuff is going out of country, and if it's a surprise for you, you can fix it. Uh, and um, uh, yellow, if, if, if you wanted traffic to go through your IXP and it didn't, that's also something you can fix. Um, um, we also have a network graph view, so here the dots on the outside are the RIP Atlas probes, and then the inside is where the networks are, but this, this one is quite complex, so uh, what all this graph now says is it's quite complex. Um, I have a nicer example uh, later on. Um, so now on to episode six, the last one. Um, the hackerspace is Jedi. So, um, can you, you can measure countries, but you can also measure what's between hackerspaces. So, first of all, it's where the magic happens, right? And, well, there's a nice uh, picture there of the, the Dutch hackerspaces. Um, so, what if we would just put probes there? And um, um, my colleague Vesna, she has a project to actually get these probes into, these, in, into the hackerspaces. Uh, one thing that, of course, will happen is that they will be hacked on. Uh, and we had a, a case where people actually did a responsible disclosure to us uh, of vulnerabilities which were, uh, which were fixed. Um, there's a URL there for um, uh, uh, more on this project and, 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 and on the Hackerspaces Jedi. Um, uh, and this is uh, sort of the, the, the result of that, uh, of that effort right now. There's, uh, when I took the screenshot, which uh, is not too long ago, there's 60 uh, connected ones. Uh, but if you do this for all of the 60, you'll just see, uh, well, all the paths go all over the world. So that's, well, that's, that won't be a surprise. So I, uh, I, I'm not going to show that one. Um, um, but what you, what you can do, actually, is um, um, figure out. It, what we need to figure out or to do these measurements is actually have them tagged or have them grouped uh, in, uh, in some means. Um, so what we actually thought of is there is something called tagging of these probes. That's, uh, so I have to uh, dig into a, a little bit of detail on, on how that works. Um, here's a, a bunch of... Uh, uh, tags that users put on these probes. So if you have a probe at a hackerspace, you can add the hackerspace tag to the probe. So people will know this is a hackerspace, so they can do uh, interesting stuff with them. There's a lot of interesting uh, um, uh, tags in there. DN42, um, 
uh, there's uh, universities that tag, so you, you can do all kinds of uh, measurements between all kinds of different communities uh, using these tags. And that's actually um, uh, what, what uh, the modification to the ISP Country Jedi is, the, 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 the Hackerspaces Jedi is, we do sele only select probes with these specific tags. So we select all the probes with um, uh, the Hackerspaces tag and see how they're actually interconnected. Um, and uh, what you can also do is limit this by country because they're, they're, they're all, all over the place. So if you limit it by country, you'll, you'll get, are these Hackerspaces, how are they connected? What are the networks in between? Uh, does this traffic go outside of your country? So if you're interested in connecting up hackerspaces via some kind of overlay or via some, some kind of experiments, because these are the places where experiments happen, um, what's in between? Um, and uh, of course, things like um, um, foreign nations, surveillance, these types of things that, that I mean, locally, you, you cannot escape that, but uh, if you can, if you know if your traffic goes outside of your, your locality, uh, that's, uh, that's potentially useful information to know. Especially um, um, if you're not uh, encrypting your traffic, because everybody encrypts all of their traffic, right? All of my traffic, wow. Um, so the rest of this is um, uh, the, the same, same type of methodology applies. Um, so, um, I wanted to do this for uh, Dutch hackerspaces. Um, and then I discovered that um, th these were not tagged very well. So we don't have them, uh, the users did not uh, add tags yet. So we, we, we've asked. Um, but then I thought, what, 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 what can I do then? Uh, and then, of course, I thought of the Germans, because the Germans are grundly. <laughs> Are, are very thorough, and actually I found that they, they, are, uh, they were quite good at, um, at tagging their, uh, um, uh, their hackerspaces probes. So here's a visualization, the, the same geographic visualization of um, uh, the German hackerspaces probes. So in German hackerspace, you, you can see it, uh, traffic or path will go through the Netherlands. There's so, a path through Denmark. And there's also a path through uh, Sweden, but that's actually because uh, that space uses uh, a VPN that ends up there. So, um, and in IPv6, it becomes even more interesting because there's a path, and I don't think you can see it very well, but it goes to Warsaw, or via Warsaw, which I found quite interesting. Um, but now the, 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 uh, geograph or the, the, the graph of what networks, what, net, what, what uh, things are in between the hackerspaces becomes quite interesting, I think. Because um, on the one hand, you have geography. On the other hand, you have ownership of the network. And if you just look, um, uh, I've, I've pointed out a couple, but there's far more. For the German hackerspaces, there's a Russian or Ukrainian network, I'm not sure. There's US networks, Swedish networks. It's, it's, it's all over the, the place. So um, it's interesting to see uh, that that actually happens, and uh, also interesting to, to, to be aware of it, I think. Um, so, uh, I'd like to conclude with some actions, um, or some potential actions. Uh, um, putting more probes in hackerspaces. Yeah, unfortunately, we have one left here, but if, you, uh, uh, if you're involved in a hackerspace, please um, uh, uh, consider uh, having having a probe there, uh, and if you have them, please tag them. And if it's not online, please get it online again, because then we can do all these these types of fun visualizations for all countries. Or um, what you can also do is uh, you have a bunch of uh, points in a network uh, that you want to do these same same types of visualizations between. You just tag them with something, and you have a new community of things that you can. Do this visual. This this is all open code, so you can just run this. Anybody can run this, um, uh, and of course, use the tools of visualizations. Um, again, that URL. Um, if you're a visualizer, uh, I am not, as you could see. Um, you can make far prettier visualizations, far more interaction. Uh, if you're interested in that, I'd like to talk with you. Um, and another thing you can do is we have hackathons, and you can hack away on these types of uh, 
uh, of things. So there's do or not do, there's no try. And that concludes this. Are there any questions? If there are any questions, please go to the microphone that is also in the stream. No. No questions? No questions. Yeah, okay. then another oh. warm applause for oh. the speaker and for the project at least. Thank you. Thank you.